Every summer growing up, my family road tripped 20 hours from Texas to Michigan to visit family, so I know what to expect when it comes to road trips. There are going to be close quarters fights with siblings, a life and death crisis because my Game Boy's batteries are dying in the middle of the most important Pokemon battle of my life, and lots and lots of time reading a good book, or 10. If you're sitting shotgun on a cross-country road trip, you can get plenty of reading done. And even if you're driving, an audiobook can keep you entertained. And bonus for those drivers uh, who are listening to audiobooks, this will keep you oblivious to the close quarters sibling fights that your kids are now taking part in. So, win-win. The first book I'm going to recommend is The Narrative of Cabeza de Vaca. And this is a true story that stuck with me since 6th grade Texas history class. It's a first-hand account told by Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, who was part of a failed conquistador mission in 1527 to settle Florida. Of the 400 Spanish men who set off on the expedition hoping for riches and glory, only four survived, one of those being Cabeza de Vaca. And the reason I'm calling this a road trip story is because over the course of eight years, Cabeza de Vaca and his dwindling list of friends walked from Florida to Spanish-controlled Mexico, enduring kidnappings, desertions, and all kinds of misadventures. What's great about the book is that you get a sneak peek into native life in the 1500s, as the author becomes a kind of revered healer who's looked up to by a number of tribes, or so he claims. Remember, this probably is just a true-ish story, uh, since Cabeza de Vaca wrote it to impress his king, gain favor, and maybe score some doubloons for all his troubles. You know, the same goals as every writer, right? The second book on my list is The Greatest Beer Run Ever by John Chick Donahue. This is another true story, but this one takes place during the Vietnam War, and it was actually recently turned into a movie in 2022 starring Zac Efron and Russell Crowe. The book's protagonist and author, Chick, is out with some friends one night and decides to embark on a ridiculous, epic mission to bring a taste of home to his buddies fighting overseas, just to show them that someone is thinking of them and that someone cares. So Chick sets off with a backpack full of beer intended for his friends and neighbors that he grew up with. But this isn't your typical road trip. Chick has to board a cargo ship destined for Vietnam, track down his friends, and maybe bend the truth a little about who he is and what he's doing there. From hitching rides with colorful characters to dodging enemy fire in the jungles of Vietnam, Chick's adventure will have you on the edge of your seat and reaching for another cold one. Cheers. The third book on my road trip list is In the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Klune, and this is a road trip with robots. In a world ruled by robots bent on destroying humanity, a boy named Vic and a trio of his robot-slash-android friends go on a quest to rescue Vic's android father from the robot's capital city. Now, what I think is probably the best part of this book is the back-and-forth dialogue between Rambo, a sweet little uh, robotic vacuum, and Nurse Ratchet, a threatening medical robot. It's hilarious their back and forth. Their contrasting skills and personalities create comedy gold. And while the dialogue shines, there's plenty of meaningful introspection too. There's a bunch of ruminating about what it means to be human, have a soul, exercise free will, and love someone or something else. It's a book sandwich that saves its best for the first and the last. What I mean by that is it made me laugh out loud in the first third, dragged a little bit in the middle, uh, but wound up making me tear up by the end. Next up is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Buckle up for an adventure aboard the Wayfarer, a tunneling spaceship that creates wormholes for other ships to pass through. The ship's latest mission is taking the quirky crew on an extra dangerous road trip to the outskirts of the known universe. Along the way, there are unexpected detours, high-stakes encounters with some of the galaxy's strangest aliens, and a lot of emotional connections as well. And in the bigger scope of the book's world, there's a lot of political considerations and ethical quandaries that they have to view and work through as they go along. The end product is a rich picture of intimacy, vulnerability, and acceptance in the vastness of space. It boldly goes where some have gone before, but in a really gratifying way. The next book on my list is The Road by Cormac McCarthy. A lot of people have probably already read this classic dystopian masterpiece, or cheated and watched the movie with one of my favorite actors of all time, Viggo Mortensen. Uh, but if you haven't cracked it open yet, you'll discover an empty world nearly devoid of life and full of ash, 
gray and cold. The book takes place after some extinction level event happens and the setting, like I mentioned, is unforgiving. Strangers are more than likely going to kill you and take your stuff uh, and into this unfriendly situation we meet a father and son journeying through a, this deserted wasteland toward some southern coast. It's possibly the harshest road trip on my list and McCarthy's gritty writing style gives it extra oomph. So definitely not one that jives well with you know, windows down, tunes cranked up uh, on a desert highway kind of feeling, but one that's gonna drag you down a notch. Up next is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I had this as one of my favorite books of the 1970s because it's just that good, and this classic sci-fi has the ability to tickle anyone's funny bone even after more than 45 years. It's genuinely laugh out loud funny. You probably already know the gist, so I won't spend too much time on this one, but in case you've been living under a rock, uh, here's the quick and dirty synopsis. Before Earth is destroyed to make a uh, way for a space highway, Arthur Dent is rescued by his alien friend and taken away from Earth. So begins a hilarious adventure filled with quirky but well-developed characters and witty writing that flips everyday items on their head. Its road trip mentality is right there in the title. You'll zip through the cosmos and make plenty of zany pit stops along the way. The next book on my road trip list is Singer Distance by Ethan Chatagnier. Now for those of you familiar with the channel, you're going to say hello again to one of my favorite books that I read last year. If you like sci-fi or alt history books or want a captivating novel you won't want to put down, this is it. So here are the deets of the plot. In an alternate version of our world, Mars and Earth are in communication via math problems. Uh, Mars sends us a math problem, we solve it, they send a harder one, we solve that, and so on and so on and so on. However, now it's 1960 and the Earth has been trying to solve Mars's latest math problem for 30 years. Ever since then, our rusty red neighbor has been incommunicado. So, some MIT grad students road trip to go paint the solution uh, to this 30-year-old math problem in the desert. The book then picks up with a couple of these students several years later. The book doesn't overwhelm you with mathematical theories, but keeps you wanting to know more about the two main characters, Rick and the love of his life, math genius Crystal Singer. And I highly recommend this one, especially to those who are road tripping through a desert, like Arizona, Nevada, or somewhere in the southwestern United States. It feels like it jives really well with that atmosphere. Next up is Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Seven characters, each with an excellent sci-fi story, have come to the planet Hyperion seeking answers. These characters are on a pilgrimage, eh, kind of like a road trip, uh, to the planet's time tombs, where they think the answers lie. Now, this book features those seven characters in a bunch of fascinating novellas just that are kind of woven, stitched together, uh, and through those, it reveals more about the planet of Hyperion and the deadly creature guarding the time tombs, which is known as the Shrike. But what's maybe most surprising about this book is that it made me cry, which is crazy since a science fiction book like this has no business being as deep as it is. And we're moving on to Mortal Engines by Philip Reeve. Set in a dystopian world where cities roam the earth on massive wheels and big ones eat the smaller ones, this book takes the concept of a road trip to a whole new level. Picture London as a giant mobile metropolis chasing down smaller towns for resources. But this isn't just a joyride through some post-apocalyptic landscapes. The main character Tom finds himself caught up in a whirlwind adventure when he encounters Hester Shaw, a mysterious young lady on a quest for revenge. Together they embark on a journey across the wasteland, struggling to survive, discovering the truth about London's ruler, and trying to get justice before it's too late. This is a really fun read that kind of feels like Indiana Jones. I mean, the main character Tom is a historian, like Indiana Jones was an archaeologist, and he's suddenly thrust into a spot where he's trying to avoid getting caught and killed while uncovering these long-lost secrets about the book's world. It's a cool concept where the setting is the star and these flawed characters are well above average for an adventure novel like this. And last, but certainly not least, is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. You know it, you love it, you've probably read it, but it's still worth mentioning. The Hobbit features Bilbo Baggins of the Shire, who's living a peaceful life until a wizard and a group of dwarves show up at his front door. 
Although initially hesitant to join them, he's soon off reclaiming a lost kingdom and treasure guarded by a fearsome dragon. It's the ultimate road trip filled with trolls, goblins, elves, and the iconic Gollum. The action takes place on mountain paths, in dark forests, and inside creepy caves. This variety of fantasy elements in such a small package is what makes it an unforgettable reading experience. Now what I like about The Hobbit when thinking about it in terms of road trips is that it's about the journey rather than the destination and how your road trip companions can make or break your experience. It's also about growth along the way, like how our reluctant friend Bilbo has to get out of his comfort zone and transform into this unexpected hero. I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but the world and characters are really what make this book tick. Just be sure to pack your map of Middle Earth uh, so you know where you are at all times. So what are your favorite road trip books? Let me know in the comments and be sure to also share what book reading memories you have of long hours spent in the car if you have them. I uh, hope you have a great summer and happy reading.